Okay, so good day class. So today we're going to discuss about organizations in the construction side. Okay, this is part of our project planning lecture for building technology for. Okay, so let's discuss about uh, the project management team. So that team of specialists um, that are included in this team, we have the planners, administrators, and supervisors. So they're working under the supervision of the project manager which is responsible for managing the project. So the objectives of the management team are the following. So the production of construction works which satisfy the client's functional requirements. Then second, the completion of the project within specified time limits. Those projects, less, uh, they are bound to a certain time limit. So you don't have unlimited time when you construct a house or a building. You should uh, inform the client how long it will, think, uh, it will take for the building to be accomplished. Then you also have the completion of the project within specified cost limits. Okay, this also means, class, that your projects it has a uh, cost variable, okay? so a cost limit. Okay, so when you construct a residential building or even uh, uh, bigger infrastructures, it does not mean that the client's budget is unlimited. Okay, so your client's budget it has two sources. It could come from the savings or it could come from uh, a bank loan. Okay. So when you talk about um, bank loans, yeah. it usually uh, depends on how much the bank approved for a specific project. For example, if the project is worth um, 10 million, for example, uh, let's say that the bank approved only 80% of that, so the bank will only finance 8 million and the client will have to produce the 2 million needed to complete the 10 million budget. So the cost uh, is something which is the pri uh, one of the primary considerations when you implement the project. So you must be honest with your client at the beginning of the project if his budget is really sufficient to complete the project. Or you could make arrangements and let's do the project in certain parts or portions. Okay. Then you have the construction to specify the standards. That's why class in our first part of the meter we discuss about specifications. Okay, so the the good thing is that you already understand what specifications is, but it, it's much deeper than that. When you do your specifications, that it should be based upon higher level standards in the construction industry. For example, it should be based upon ASTM standards, it should be based upon the International Building Court, or in the Philippine setting, at least it should comply with PD 1096. Okay, then you have the preservation of health and safety of the people involved. Okay? So, as the architect has, or the future manager of the project, must make sure that the people who are involved in the site that they are safe. Okay? So, the success of the project class does not only mean that you finish the project on time, on cost and with the right quality it also means that there are no accidents okay. if you wish to stay uh, in the long run in the construction industry for example if you have established a construction company you must have that record also okay. because mm, your project would not be completed without the people doing it And let's talk about the team function. So in order to achieve the objectives even above, the management team must exercise the functions of planning, procuring, and controlling. These functions will exist through all stages of the project. So they're described in detail in later chapters. Okay, let's talk about the team organization. So the project manager. So he is the person with the authority and responsibility to manage the project according to the requirements. So the first important management decision to be taken by a client is the appointment of a project manager. So when appointing a project manager, the client should consider the following factors. One, the qualifications and experience required. Okay, so what does this mean? So when you hire a project manager, um, you should at least have the experience. So I have done that project before. So if you're going to require a project manager for a 10-story uh, commercial building or mixed-use building, so the project manager you must hire is someone who has already experienced doing similar projects like that. Okay. So when you talk about qualifications, let's just say the bare minimum, so at, at least he has a degree related to, to the construction industry, such as uh, in 
architecture and engineering or at most your project manager should be uh, have a PMP certification okay so a PMP or project management a professional certification so then next is the person or person to whom is responsible his terms of reference the limits of authority okay so should something uh, that should be defined at the beginning so what are the limits of the authority of the project manager so it should be established uh, so that the project manager will know uh, these boundaries especially in, in the decision making process okay then his personal qualities including leadership skills okay so when you talk about project management it talks about uh, a lot of leadership attributes which should be present And we have the steering committee. So, in government projects, particularly, a client ministry or department may have difficulty in fitting a project manager to its organizations. So a solution may be to set up a steering committee representing the various parties involved. This committee will normally have a chairman, a senior official of the client or ministry. The project manager should be a member of the committee from which he will derive his authority. So, the functions of the committee involved include determining the terms of reference for the project management team so when you terms of reference it means the functions the duties and the obligations then you also have approving the project management team monitoring progress of the project and the moving obstacles to the progress of the project and letter C uh, assistance uh, of the project manager to the composition of the team such as the project as the project progresses through its various stages, the minimum continuous requirement through the life of the project is the project manager and secretary for large projects. There may be a full-time specialist which assists the project manager, for example, a planning engineer, a quantity surveyor, etc. So, by the way, class, are you familiar with what a quantity surveyor is? Okay, so in large project class, the function of the quantity surveyor is to uh, estimate the quantities for the project. So not necessarily it includes a price but mostly about quantities okay so they are really important also the planning engineer so the planning engineer makes sure that the project is uh, scheduled uh, it's well scheduled and all the activities are ironed out so the realities of project management so projects are managed by people who have to make decisions and enforce procedures that may affect other people so project management must be seen as a dynamic, difficult, and often abrasive art based on well-proven principles but not solely devoted to their slavish, slavish or rigorous application. So what does this mean class? So it means class that in, uh, in project management or in managing construction projects, it's not, although there are established theories and principles behind and on how to be on how to make sure that your project runs smoothly but you must always consider that when you manage a project you are managing people so when you say people people have different personalities so i think you're already aware of that uh, when you do your group work so when you work with your classmates each and everyone have different personalities so the, uh, so that's why you must know how to handle them especially when you work for example international firms or corporation uh, or instruction corporations will be meeting not only with uh, fellow filipinos but you'll also be dealing with other nationalities as well okay, so other nationalities they have different cultures traditions so they behave differently so if you're go if you're going to be a project manager for a very culturally diverse project so it will be it is will be more difficult okay, because um you have to consider a lot of cultures and you have to consider a lot of personalities involved in the project. Okay, uh, let's go to site installation. So, the aspect should be taken into consideration while installing a new construction site as follows. One is the site layout. Then the site access. So, how are you going to access the site? Okay. You have to think about the site access class, especially when you are planning for the delivery of the construction material so where will your uh, heavy equipment pass going to the site 
So and why were you when we will your uh, employees uh, move? Then you also have to consider storage. You consider storage class because, for example, you have your cement bags. Okay? So you can't just place your cement bags under the direct uh, weathering conditions under the you can just place them exposed to nature that's what would happen if your cement bags uh, got exposed to rain so it would harden and it would be useless it, and if it becomes useless it would mean that you have to purchase again so it would affect your material schedule to also affect your budget because you will be losing a lot of money then plant so when you say plant plus that is where you're going to mix your concrete okay so in bigger projects you have what you call the batching plant so that's where they're going to produce the concrete needed for the project so you have to plan where you're going to put it so in smaller projects such as residential projects class you must think about where you're going to mix the concrete uh, because if you're just going to mix anywhere if there are some it, you mean, I mean your site will look uh, quite messy so you don't only plan class what's uh, in the what's in the blueprints you also plan how you're going to execute okay so that's how difficult the function of a project manager or an architect is okay then you have your site cut so in bigger projects you have places where you're um, construction team will sleep or eat. Okay, uh, in the Philippines we call that tempasil or temporary facilities. Then you have temporary services such as temporary sources of water. Uh, where how are you going to tap uh, the needed water? And then how about going to tap the needed electricity? And of course, you need to have your fencing. So you must make sure that nobody from uh, outside your construction. Uh, construction team is within your project or vicinity because it might cause accidents now let's discuss about the site layout so every site has a different shape its nature and environment so the construction methods should also be different therefore there is no single pattern that can be recommended for every site so however, in preparing a site layout, the important considerations are analyzing the contract drawings and documents in detail, find out the restrictions and the use of the site by the permanent structures, analyze the construction methods to obtain the required space to be kept clear, then work out the area of the site which is left for temporary buildings, storage, etc. So site layout plan is especially important in sites and towns where the space is very limited. So, for example, as um, we're going to construct in the city, so if you have, if you're, if in your site you have neighboring buildings surrounding the vicinity of the property that you're constructing, so you have to be very careful, because uh, what if uh, during your construction, uh, your ex excavation, and you did not plan it out well, then uh, the adjacent building will collapse. So this is what it means. You must be really considering uh, with a site layout. So I think a type of construction layout is in, even in the figure 2.1, which is in the next slide. So when you say site access, so access has two separate aspects: the actual entrance from the public highway to the site and the access within the site. So for both the vehicles and plant entering or leaving the site or using the site should be also considered. So the position of the main access to the site must be practical and sensible but not just the most convenient. So all the arrangements should be approved by the police and the local highway authority if the site requires a permanent access. It's good as well as temporary access also. So any access should have good visibility and clear of obstructions, direction signs, and warning assist the fruit smooth flow of vehicles. So the width of the access should be fixed Considering the large size of vehicle, like the site, details of the site access should be given to the emergency services. 
Okay, so when planning your site access class, you must make sure that it is sufficient enough for the biggest type of machinery which you plan to use in the project. For example, if you're going to use a site excavator, you must consider already its size. If you're going to use a dump truck, you must already know if it's a full-size dump truck or a new, uh, mini dump truck. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is figure 2.1 class, so the construction side layout, so let's discuss this uh, briefly. So as you can see in the figure, we are building a two-story office block. Okay. So here you can have your aggregate storage, so we're going to store your aggregates, then you have your wave batching mixer, then you have your current silo, then you have a car park, then you have a checker unit. So the function of the checker unit is to check what's going in and out of the site. Then you have a site office, a first aid office in case of accidents, some toilets, a drying room, a canteen for eating. Then you have uh, some storage and if you have subcontractors, you can also allocate an off uh, office for them. Then you have uh, electricity substation for the supply cable, this is the public highway. Then you also consider temporary drainage during construction. Then you have lock stores of and compound. Then one thing you must consider class uh, is the top uh, soil heat okay. uh, top soil heat okay. I don't know it's top soil, uh, soil heat top soil soil heat so if you're going to excavate this one this new two story of his block so you should have a place we're going to place on the soil okay. all the excavated soil and if you can see class there's a clear path here where the crane truck where the cranes will pass okay, that's, there's a temporary road okay so your construction site class uh, is part of the things that you must plan especially if you're going to do design build services or going to open a construction company in the near future okay so access within the site should be convenient for loading and unloading materials in storage points or work areas so if the site is big enough an internal roadway you know, one way uh, system is desirable. So, if there are many overhead cables, then a temporary checker unit should be erected on either side to stop any vehicle that is too high. So, the access and roadway should be made up with the suitable materials to avoid vehicle getting stuck. Okay, so the need to store materials for the site is one should have enough materials to stop the work. So it means that you must stop, uh, you have enough material stop fire uh, for the construction uh, uh, for the construction process so that it won't be halted due to the lack of materials. Next is your risk. Economic buying, you don't buy expected. So when you buy the materials in the US, the supplier they can give you a lot of discounts. So you'll be saving uh, some cost. Then you have uh, changes in manufacturers' uh, production directly, deliveries, and limited availability. So, small storing materials on the site is costly and therefore requires energy. So, a careful timing of deliveries can reduce the funds stored. So, valuable materials are stored in a lock room. All materials should be stored in a tech tray. For example, aggregate should be stored in a clean, firm base, preferably concrete. So, and no dirt or excess of water is allowed. So, different sizes should be stored separately and near to the mixer. So, Bag cement or lime should be kept dry, but be hot and not allowed to come in contact with moisture or moist air. So especially your bag cement glass, uh, it should not be exposed to elements, otherwise it will hurt to become a uh, business material. Okay, so one key glass to reduce the storing of the site and you have to partner with your suppliers at the time. So you coordinate with them, then you plan the deliveries. Uh, Next is uh, plant. So the choice of plant depends primarily on the work to be done. But the secondary consideration is the size and nature of the site. Adequate roadways required within the site. That should be maintained regularly and more high efficiency. So that's the first question for the construction plan for the place we're going to fix the concrete. 
So all necessary records must be kept and legal writing of that using the public as well as the site must be licensed and registered. So for starting that, just tower crane. Here you must be taken to choose the correct uh, set, setting to suit the construction and this does not clash with the mobile cut. Okay, so site cuts, so site cuts are temporary buildings connected for the duration of the construction work. Could be timber sectional huts or mobile huts or caravans. So huts are administrative purposes, uh, storage, workshops, and services. A minimum of one is necessary to use a site office. Normally, the telephones of the the hut, and the hut is placed up near the entrance. In this way, the visitors do not want to the site to watch and get on persons or people's entry or leaving the site. So, it's really important to test the track of people entering and leaving the site. For a value system, one is security. Uh, because if you won't control the flow of people coming up the site, might some materials, materials to reduce the budget for construction. Okay. So the number of huts for operatives depends on the number of activities. So these huts are used as toilets, changing rooms, drying with clothes, etc. So one thing you must consider does your lab is to have a place, a place for your personal to uh, to go, uh, such as your uh, toilets or restrooms. So, this such should be normally be kept in groups according to their purpose. Those needing drainage and receiving water supply should naturally be together and near to the temporary spaces. If possible, they will be kept away from the construction areas to reduce the level of dust and noise. Levels. Temporary services. So, as soon as the site is set up, and before actual construction starts, temporary uh, electricity, water, telephone, and drainage facility. So, fencing. So, fencing is needed for the protection of the public and adjoining premises as well as security. However, the advantage of fencing is actually compared against the cost of conditions. So, it means that when you fence your site class, it has certain cost of conditions. But for me class, it is much better to fence your site. Because it will be costlier if you're going to have a litigation because uh, some uninvited visitor went in and got an accident inside the facility. So you might be so important as if that happens. So it's much better to fence it to secure your construction site. You can also secure your materials and also avoid lawsuits, especially if you are constructing something which is uh, near the city or areas where there are a lot of, uh, of population. Now let's go to the construction site organization. So a good contractor always tries to keep his site staff a minimum for economic reasons. To achieve this, the right type of men must be used, must be given freedom and responsibility on their own initiative. So they must have big communication with each other and their areas of action is clearly defined. So a contractor cannot afford to tolerate the effectiveness in any of the responsible uh, of these uh, responsible conditions. So inside the uh, personnel or contractor the problem, so you have the engine, the site engineer, the office manager, the general foreman, the plant manager, so, however, on small job, the duties of the agent, the site engineer, combined, and the general foreman also do the plan. So, large uh, construction projects, so a contract manager will be appointed over the agents, which job be managerial rather than technical and control. So, uh, first the agent, so the agent is responsible for directly controlling the whole of the construction work on site. So, and he will have wide powers and he will use his equipment, fire machine, and equipment, not just materials, for subcontractors. His power to use things with reference to the firms, and of which will depend on the size of the particular project. So, it's 
make sure it is touched with the head office while it's adapted to his firm. And of course, of course, he's standing with his firm. So, in Asian months, a number of talents he must acknowledge his construction. So, he must be able to find men and organize your head. He also needs sound business sense because his job is not only to get to work, built properly, to the satisfaction of the engineer, but also to make a profit for the contractor. So if things go wrong, with an intended plan and it's almost to be recurrent for the agent must inform the agent. So all the information are centralized upon him. So once the agent has made up his mind to make changes, it's the office manager and the sub agent jobs will see the necessary instructions get to the right person without the so in my experience, class, the agent also refers to the construction manager, the site construction manager of the project. So the site construction manager of the project, he represents uh, the head office, the firm. So he'll be the one contacting directly to the main office. There are certain problems uh, over a certain project. So we only employ uh, this kind of structure, especially if we're working on a very large project or a mega project. Well, large for example. Then you have the site engineer. So the site engineer and his staff are responsible to see that the works are constructed to the right lines and levels. So responsibility also extend by the agent of all the site engineering matters. So we need to take the site levels, uh, lining in and level construction work, planning, our access routes and bridges, dealing with power supplies, water supply, drainage. So we are also responsible for progress and quality records. So each engineer will in addition normally have a section of work after measuring up the work in the section weekly or monthly. Uh, on small jobs, the site engineer may also act as sub -agent. So in my experience, the site engineer doesn't necessarily mean that it's the same engineer. It's, the, it's a wide array. So you have site architect, site civil engineer, site electrical engineer, site mechanical engineer, site electronics and communications engineer, and we have a site geodetic engineer, and sometimes a site survey engineer. Okay. So we have functions, so we go to the site uh, to make sure that all the works are done in accordance with uh, plans and specifications uh, prepared by the, uh, by the architectural firm who would put in the contract documents. Okay. Then you also have the office manager. So within the site office, the agent's principal administration administrator is the office manager is responsible to cover carrying out most of the paperwork, correspondence, issuing of orders, materials, receiving and checking the house. The patients normally under him, there are other persons who speak her, order clerk, correspondence, secretary, and the house clerk. Also, he also controls other staff such as voice checker, storekeeper, messengers, boys, staff, car drivers, and night watchmen. So there is no separate site cashier. The office manager also has a salary. So if it's your first time hearing this term, that's uh, the employee. So this is something uh, uh, unique in the Middle East. So they have higher staff. So uh, their primary function is for this service, the engineers and other staff. So from time to time, from hour to hour, you can request from them to uh, make uh, something for you. Okay, so let's look at this. So, this is the key personnel employed on site by a contractor who take charge of the construction. Uh, no, so, the job management is uh, 1.1 pounds. So, you have here the agent, and you have here the sub agent or the deputy. The chief clerk, accounts, judges, bookkeepers, checkers, typists. You have here the general foreman. You have the divisional format, so you have your format for architecture works, mechanical works, work, mechanical works, etc. And you have your leaders and the laborers, plant manager, teachers, electrician, 
Mesa. Carpenter foreman, the carpenter, the laborers, we have your site engineer, we have your assistant or division engineers, we have the measurement engineers, the draftsman, the okay, So the term here used uh, is mostly um, the structure. We're going to see, we're going to work outside the Philippines. So, in class in the Philippines, you have a different uh, structure. But it's important for you class to know this so that when you go out, you are at least aware of how uh, the structure is, uh, construction structure is in other countries. Then you also have engineer side organization. You have the residents. Engineer's representative and chief responsible person decided to ask the resident engineer is the opposite member of the agent. Uh, he is chief executive of site engineer's job is primarily of seeing that the works are built, which the engineer has designed and instructed to have been built. So he's also in charge of all the contractor cares out all his obligations under the contract construction. So the resident engineer is responsible for the engineer when he is actually paid with employer. So in every square constant his loyalty must be to the engineer who designed the work and responsible for instituting the contract of construction entered into the employer contract. So in all cases of doubt of records of the statute which always first for the engineer. So this is uh, viewed as uh, something uh, set up in the Middle East. Now let's come up here. So there is there is a engineer staff so even a small job Necessary for the resident engineer to be assisted by an inspector in a typist or other office worker. The larger jobs will need a team of engineers are like a specialist assistant. So, if you're a resident engineer, so you have a deputy assistant engineer, the inspectors, the draftsman, the contracts, the engineer, the counselor, the counselor, you have the office manager, the first typist, you have your specialist engineers, the soil mechanics, the survey, etc. Then you have an uh, engineering assistant. In general, our uh, vice uh, resident engineer will ensure that his assistants are kept continuously informed what the progress of the job has all from time to time. Their duties that we do, of course, each engineer becomes familiar with all parts of the job. That's important to take part in the aspects of engineering the job offers. The time an engineer spends on site is one of the most constructive uh, periods of his career. So, uh, the inspectors, so we have task of continuously inspecting the work. We primarily work outside, but we also move down the towns of the projects. There are usually skilled tradesmen having special capital needs. And we can advise the resident engineer when we must be able to judge quality work management. So, the author who um, made this uh, someone who has experienced uh, in the middle east construction industry and you can see that uh, the term engineer is limited there is only lesser mentioned but because that's uh, in arabic uh, the architect is called mohandis mari means architect engineer the engineer in arabic is called mohandis so in the Arab culture, uh, even if you're an architect, uh, some will all, always be referred to as Mohandis engineer. Okay? So that that's why uh, in this particular lecture, uh, the term usually most it refers to the term engineers. And if you're new to the term inspectors. We are the one usually inspecting the application at the site. We are usually part of the, what you call this, the consultant. We just hired the owner. For example, you have an architectural inspector. The job of an architectural inspector is to inspect the site and make sure architectural finishes are done properly and if you have a civil inspector his job at the site is to make sure the contractor executes the job 
importance with the right uh, accordance to the plans prepared by the structural engineer. And we have also the electrical inspector who will inspect uh, the site to make sure that the electrical lines are, are in accordance with the electrical plans. Okay, so that's the purpose of inspectors and they are different from the site architects. So when you say the site architects, site engineers, they are usually the, um, the ones with the professional license with qualifications. So when you talk about architectural inspector, um, they have accumulated experience over time which qualifies them to uh, an inspector. So, those are the different hierarchies of construction, especially at the middle east. So, it's not the same here in the Philippines, but you can find some class and derive some them. Because the middle east class, um, the middle east is considered the architect's playground. Okay? So, in the middle east, you can find very nice buildings. So you can learn a lot from them. Okay? So that's why I'm, my lecture today is about uh, the structure, the organizational structure that they are doing, because they're able to execute uh, mega projects there. Okay, so if you have any questions, I left my email. Um, I will respond uh, as long as I'm online. Okay? So see you next week and thank you.